everybody. Uh, welcome to a Discord stage podcast with us here on the RuneScape team. It's really oh, great yeah, to have you fine. here. Okay, um, thank you. For those of you who've not joined us for a Discord You're stage, slightly it louder like than more them, but that's fine. I should be. Here, I need to be amazing. louder than them. Um, this is what you can expect. <laughs> these are more casual chats. We use these as a bit of a mix-up between our live streams. Can, can we talk with them? Maybe present a little bit more and kind of show you some things that are coming for the game. You know, setting up, being a bit more formal. This is more of a laid-back chat. It's more for us to have opportunities to uh, talk to you about different parts of the game, like development, podcast, um, bring you inside question it a little mark. bit. So That's it's what I'm really great title. to have you here, whether you're listening to us uh, on demand after the show or if you're here with us live. That's uh, really, really awesome. If you are really here with us live, um, the biggest thing we can say is please do drop any questions you have in JMod questions. We're looking at the chat. Oh, they and we're are... also looking at uh, Where's CM JMod talks questions as well. So. Where's um, the chat? You are Here? welcome to, to kind of ch talk along as we go and join the community conversation in CM Chats and then drop any specific questions in the JMod uh, Questions uh, channel and that's wait, how we'll try to organize Where's JMod those. Questions uh, channel? I'm just going to do a quick introduction to our cast. So hopefully all of you saw the Roadmap stream uh, on Tuesday. Is it, is it this? Um, so we have a returning guest from that who it was their first appearance for RuneScape with us, which was amazing. I cannot tell. Is it this? Um, Mod Marcus is here with us again. Hello, Mod Marcus. Hello, how are you? There's no, like, J-Mod question. I'm assuming Good. it's this yeah, channel. It's, uh, I think um, there's Hi. a lot to talk about today. I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming it's this channel. I'm, pretty, I'm still pretty buzzed up from that stream, too. <laughs> so I don't know about you, but, like, it's been a fun week uh, for RuneScape, that's for sure, eh? Yeah, it's been, it's been busy. That's what I say. It's been mm. very busy the last few weeks. <laughs> like, Huli yeah. is, like, yeah, it's been a lot ask in the J-Mod sure. question um, channel, also, but I don't see the channel. I just see this channel. Before we get into it with me and Marcos, uh, Mod Jack is with us. Hey, Mod Jack. It's been a Hello. while since Hello. we let you loose on Discord. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited to get back to talking far too much on live streams and stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's, it's good to have you here. We thought we'd bring uh, Mod Jack in. Uh, Mod Marcos has got plenty to say, <laughs> and I'm sure you'll mostly be hearing from myself. And Marcus, because uh, that's the, the subject of the show, is to let you get well, to know Marcus a little bit. And also um, to talk hey, a little bit about Hey, if anyone wants me to studio. say something um, in this chat box, let me know. For, what is it, a month or so now, Marcos? Something like that? Been working uh, with around us? that, yeah. I think, it's, I think it's about like three, four weeks, something like that. Yeah, so given that Marcus has assimilated a lot in a four-week period, <laughs> but, um, you know, we thought it'd be good to have my Jack here as well, especially it's, to talk about some things around last year and kind of Discord. some things we took forward as well, so. Um, all right, uh, I guess we'll get into it. Um, chat, hello, by the way, we see you. Um, some people talking about mod Marcus here. Save the game. Um, so some people are already hyping you up in chat, Marcus. Of which the really Jaguar. Cool. That um, of the So Jags. let's get a little bit to know you first, I think, Marcus. Firstly, like, how are you feeling after that roadmap reveal? Where are you sitting right now? Yeah, I feel good. I think that obviously before you do a, you know, it's a fairly big deal, wasn't it, the live stream? But so you always have a bit of nerves around, like, um, we thought the roadmap was good. Ask we them know exactly questions. We're going to respond to it and so on. So um, I can't really hear pleased him. to see, like, that generally it seems to be like the response has been really positive from a, a, a large uh, percentage of the community. Um, and hap hopefully it managed to kind of surpass people's kind of expectations, I guess, in terms of going into that, because I realized there'd been a somewhat fallow, fallow period in recent months. And then now, obviously, the main challenge is really with us to make sure we actually deliver on it, because actually putting together a roadmap graphic and so on is the easy bit, actually building it. And Very sure nice the, uh, the roadmap. Really we keep, like, delivering them to the players. Guys. Is, like, the <laughs> yeah, it's funny you mention about, like, the nerves going in, because I think all of us were, like, looking at the roadmap, and going, this is really good, right? Yeah, this is pretty good, right? Like, yeah, I think it is. I think oh my god! Right. Has Mod like, Keeper been replaced? Like, I'm asking the same question. Amazing and kind of exciting. I just have to know. I'm pretty sure he, he must have been replaced. Like, there was that. This kind guy of is asking the, the going, right we questions. Good. We hope that like, like, you just never know, do you? Until you go out and stream, and uh, uh, it's uh, it's a weird spot to be, isn't it? Mentally, it's like just hoping you've got things right and that you've put together something amazing. Yeah, and kind of as the we were doing the stream, obviously we could see bits of the chat coming through from um, uh, Twitch and so on, so you could get an idea about bits of it. And then the other thing you probably don't realize when you're watching it is that room is really, really warm, so it's actually like a bit like of a weird experience generally. Um, but yeah, it was really good. And then you have the slightly um, kind of meta experience of like the, when, when I finished my bit of the live stream, I kind of came off and came out and chatted to some of the team and stuff. Okay, they keep they just talking about like their feelings, like, which I mean, okay, sure. It. But it weird, like, how long are you gonna talk about your feelings? Yeah, yeah, it's um, 
It was funny as well because like I was in the, it, as in there, I was just desperately trying not to look down the whole time at the chat because we had it on that little iPad in front of us, and all I wanted to do was stare at chat. And out of the corner of my eye, I could maybe just see it moving at a million miles an hour. But I've seen it move at a million miles an hour when we've like caused people to panic by something. <laughs> so a lot of the time, I was just going, I hope they, that's a good sign. Like I have no idea. Um, but yeah, thankfully it went down really well, which is good. Um, so uh, speaking of that stream, obviously we we kind of briefly introduced you uh, on the stream. You talked a little bit about being from the Jurassic era, I think you put it, of, of RuneScape. Uh, and then obviously you, you've been an executive producer on Old School. Now you're partly on RuneScape again. <laughs> um, so like, what what is your I'm background on RuneScape? I'm confused, like, like where, that where, whole before thing. Before you were on OSRS is he as, off as old executive school? producer, what were you doing on RuneScape? What was your role and, and kind of how, what's your history with Jagex? Yeah, so I worked at um, I've worked at Jagex for many many years, and the when I first joined the company, I was working on um, uh, RuneScape. So, and I was mostly focused more on like the editorial side of the game, uh, with a couple of people that the community might know, but I've forgotten the mod names of. But um, I have worked with like I worked with ModJack. Can y'all like, talk like, about the future of MTX? So I worked mostly it's on, gonna like, get the editorial worse. Side, um, also worked quite a lot on kind of like uh, doing work on like the website and things as well. And then kind of gradually moved into more of a production role. So I worked with like various teams in RuneScape, and then I went on to various different products on uh, um, uh, Jagex. So I worked on. I spent quite a few years working on Chronicle, which um, I kind of want to ask. I kind of want to ask. Did Mod Keeper get fired? I worked on various other projects. Um, I doubt they're even going to read it. Uh, so maybe maybe I'll ask that to, when they actually um, read the chat. Started, I did a load of work on Old School in like 2019 and then went back to Old School like permanently in 2021. I mean, I've been like EP on Old School since then and now obviously leading the RuneScape team as well. So this is my first time working back on RuneScape in quite a few years now, actually. Um, uh, but yeah, obviously working on RuneScape and Old School is it's pretty busy, I would say, but I've been really enjoying it so far. In particular... So he uh, is working on work both games. Again, like Mod Jack and so on, but also That's impressive. a chance to get to uh, new, meet new people on the RuneScape team, like yourself. But hey, uh, I'm sure him, uh, half of his other, work uh, on old the, stuff, the devs and the half of the office, him that, working right, on RuneScape 3 is more than Mod Keeper has done in like three years. Awesome, yeah. It's, uh, it's, I, I actually didn't know you worked on Chronicle, which is a, is a wild one. So you've really been around the houses wow, on, the, the card like you're, game. you're kind of a RuneScape franchise master. The freaking old, like, is that was pretty old yeah. product yeah, of Jagex. Like, all sides of the business at various points, yeah. Yeah. So uh, obviously, um, you just kind of mentioned it. So uh, there was some I, I saw Spongebob. in the chat um, looking back at the stream. Oh, I missed it. What just, did you say? Just for, for clarity for everyone, like you're still working on old school you, as well, right? It's just you're working did, did you say on anything in the chat? Games, I didn't like, that's see. correct, right? No. That's correct. I'm working on oh. both games at the same time, yeah. I just said yeah, I, I missed one orb. Sleep. I want one orb. One orb. Yeah, that's uh, true. Uh, they, <laughs> they could have done something with fun orb. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a lot to consider. Like, yeah. put it in the game or something. No, like, put it in RS uh, or something. I don't I know. Guess, put it in the uh, Jagex launcher. There's a few select games that bit, people actually play played thing, quite yeah. often. They could have just kept those ones going. Back in the original time, RuneScape. Because RuneScape veterans have been through a lot of content in their day. So, like, what stood out to you? When you look back on, okay. on working well, research, what is he going to say? Working on. Yeah, I think that obviously it was a long time ago. Like some of the details elude me, but the um, overall, the thing I remember most was it, it was just like a really exciting time to be working at the studio when I first joined. Like the game was like really, really popular then, um, and there was uh, it was kind of an era of like quite a lot of classic content and stuff going out. I think. <sighs> yes. Quite a lot of, like, and Marcos, why do you think the game is not as popular now? What do you and think the, it is? Um, uh, Jeremy is like a really good buzz working there, so um, I really enjoyed kind of working on in the in the games industry because I've been like a big game fill in the like, rest you know, of the many many years like since I was fill in the rest of that. Um, and I think that the other thing I was reflecting on earlier when we were kind of like talking and stuff was the the fact that when I look back at it now, I kind of think also about how RuneScape and Jagex as a whole was really like quite you know quite innovative and ahead of the game and stuff and the way that the game worked and it was distributed and like you know even like the way you subscribe to the game like completely digitally and stuff like that was like really quite cutting edge at the time and quite a few years I totally of agree. games I'd say. Or um, did a lot of things right. Like when I think back at it I kind of took it for granted at the time but actually things like the way that the developers and I the will say community stuff was really like if they do get like the original, if they do all the stuff um, in the roadmap it's probably going to be a really good thing. Kind of oh for years, sure. But, 
Because if it do it like it is a lot, it is quite a bit. The developers would just be on. This was back in the day of the RuneScape forums. And we we can talk about the roadmap more in the podcast whenever we get there. Actually, on the forums, like reading the comments, replying to the players, and like getting feedback directly and stuff as well. It's really. I'm curious, like, what exactly is like? What is the purpose of this podcast? Like, what are they going to talk about? I still think even now it's a bit of an anomaly. Studios are they just talking about their feelings? That's what it is. Like, okay, that's fine. But it's just it's nothing new. <laughs> for, for a lot of places that's not to say anything bad about those places it's just like that was something that i came here and it was just really really cool it was like oh anyone can just go out and put a tweet out and say hey what do you think of this and what do you think of that we shut down you know full honesty um you know i think when back in 21 there was a bit of a whoa there's maybe a few too many things being said too early and and being talked about a bit prematurely and we kind of wound back a bit but i hope Last year, it felt like we kind of had our devs out there a lot more if you're listening out there, community. Because um, we kind of tried to, to encourage our devs to be like, okay, maybe we maybe we range you in a little bit too much here. Because it's a bit of a magic of RuneScape, right? It's a, it's a pretty unique thing across both games, really. Um, no, no, no. But, Enough but with your excuses. Devs out there like that, stop, stop with the excuses. Uh, Doom keeps people in check, true. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, we we said too true. much stuff that in two, 2021, uh, so we have to I, be uh, more quiet. Nah. Enable as much as keep people in check, though. So uh, yeah, it's a whole thing. By the way, I don't know if you're seeing this chat, Marcos, but like this is one of the most wholesome RuneScape chats. We've gone down tangents about Bob's axes, and if you are older than Bob's axes in terms of experience in Gilanor, um, so I don't know if you're like that comparison. Now. Someone was talking about armies again, law. I did do work. You know, I'm sure. So, yeah, I'm sure the I'm chat is very wholesome because if they say, if you say something not wholesome, you'll just get banned from the server. So I don't think anyone's gonna troll. God, funnel up. That's throwback. Next, you're gonna start mentioning mini clip, and then I'm gonna get proper flashbacks. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think anyone's gonna, do gonna troll classic, in this chat. It's an important part of getting to know you, Marcos. Right? I'm gonna do the classic thing. You gotta pick something. Your favorite child, not between RS and RSRS, RS, because that would just be cruel. But What's your favorite thing about RuneScape, if you had to pick? What stands out to you most? Yeah, well, I think with RuneScape, I think the things I've always liked about it in Raids. particular is just, like, the uniqueness of the character and the tone of the game. Like, it's... What? See, because I worked with the developers and stuff, okay. and you, that you kind of see them almost, like, in the content and stuff, and I always found that, like, really fascinating. But, like, what? I think the, um, the unique character of the game and the tone and the humor and all that kind of stuff, obviously, is, like, particularly, like, important and stuff like that. I think most of the time I've spent in game has been focused around mostly questing and skilling, I think, because I, I'm not very good at combat or anything. The PvP is kind of moderately terrifying as well. Um, and generally, I've grown up a lot playing a lot of RPGs and things, particularly more like open world type um, RPGs. So things like Oblivion and stuff like that are kind of like the games I really love. And uh, there's quite a lot of similarities, I think, between those kind of games and RuneScape. There's a lot of shared DNA. Uh, so yeah, so RuneScape... I think the things I've spent the most on is probably like what I've described as like the eternal loop of woodcutting and fire making. So I've spent <laughs> a lot of time basically constantly cutting that down, and I find that just kind of like a soothing. Oh my god! I just quite enjoy doing. Even Mod Marcos is a things. casual skiller. Oh, I, I get that. like when I look back, and some people in chat said it as well, especially around like nostalgia and everything. The thing that I always remember is like being a younger boy uh, and playing the game and like, you know, finding every hour of the day I could do it, you know, waking up at like 5 a.m. to when mining resources weren't, sh were, you know, shared. Oh, wait, that's true. I people, did that too. Getting up with my friends so that we could go mine certain things. But the thing that always throws back, I'd be interested, chat, if this is the same for you. There are certain songs I have an association with that remind me of certain things in RuneScape. There are certain songs in my life that I still listen to now that if I hear them, I immediately think, oh, I'm walking from Lumby to Varrock. No, I actually... Right? It's no, like a trigger. He, he, he is so right. Like, yeah, when you listen to, like, same thing, right? um, like medieval or it's, something, it's crazy. It, it, it's like it, it, a, hits, it just brings it hits you back different. to the moment like a, um, it can do for a memory in your life outside the game as well. Um, and that's what always stands out to me. It's like, it's the only game I have that association with. It's really, really weird. Um, which also tells you that I had. Uh, I mean, I have that association with, sorry, with other games uh, as well. Team, your audio but is amazing. RS1 is amazing. definitely very strong. I mean, you don't. No disrespect. Uh, Linkin Park, yeah. So I've got some Linkin Park song associations as well. So, <laughs> yeah, we should do something about that. We should celebrate that more. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent. Sorry. Um, okay, we should get into a little bit into like what I think a lot of people are here for, which is a little bit about where we're going, 
Um, and a little bit about what's been going on as well. I think there's probably a lot yes. to talk about there, and it's something that you where know, we are didn't we want going to bring to a live stream where we want to talk forwards, but probably it's really interesting to a lot of people who have taken time to join us today. Firstly, let's talk about like, do you have this benefit of having worked across both both games? What is it you're most excited to bring from how old school RuneScape Please. approaches things? Please. And also, I kind of want to add to that because I think RuneScape does a lot of amazing things too. So, like, what's one thing you're most excited to bring out of RuneScape more that it already has what? too? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is this? Yeah, I think with um, in terms of things to bring over from old school, like we touched this a bit in the live stream the other day, but I think that some of it's to do with like the regularity of the community interaction. So it's making sure that we're talking to players through the development process and making sure they're on the journey with us. So they're kind of aware of what we're thinking and we can kind of, obviously the earlier we can kind of get like core feedback and validation and stuff like that, the better, because it means that the, the, the okay, this is nothing new. He hasn't said anything um, new yet. They already so said we wanted like to that, talk more, um, which is, I, which is good. Around, yeah, that's making sure there's like regular beats of like talking to the players each week giving information each week about new updates and things like that in terms of like, or talking about the previously announced updates in more detail and so on. So that's more like blog posts and- This guy says, so I don't that. want I really polls. Like bringing um, some of that stuff back. Really? Used to do I mean, yeah, don't poll everything, but like some well. things- um, The other kind of things I've been should looking be, at is- um, Should be polled. Uh, I've been working quite a bit with more Jack on is around like the things like the roadmap structure and um, how we can get that a bit further out into the future. And so we can communicate it more earlier to the players and more detail and things like that. So what we did the other day in terms of showing like a quite detailed uh, roadmap for like the next six months tended to be like quite similar to what we'll do in the future. Um, it might be able to keep a bit more back as a surprise. Wait, the RS guys because, um, said they uh, told like me I could stream this, I promise. So we can, like, Wait, I, I, I didn't ask for permission, I'm just uh, streaming it. <laughs> um, and we'll hopefully be like really pleasant surprises for the players and stuff. But yeah, generally it's like... They surely don't care about me streaming like it. At how we balance like the larger and the smaller updates, making sure that there's meaningful updates going each month and avoiding there being months where the only things going in are kind of like quite ephemeral content that kind of goes in and out of the game, like uh, the short-term events and that kind of stuff. So it's trying to make sure there's a really good balance of updates and also good. making sure there's a variety of updates, which is one of the things we were really keen to do with the roadmap that we shared the other day. Making sure, like I mentioned, I talked earlier about skilling and questing being like my favorite thing. So making sure there's, uh, you know, there's a good amount of quests, like uh, law based content. I, I want to bring up, of, um, I want to bring up PvP and, and also there's quite a lot and the, the, the role playing community. Also. All the different, but like, I don't know when to do it. Groups have got like good content. Because I don't think they're reading it, the chat right now. I don't know if they are gonna. I mean, I know yeah, I some think, mods um, might be I reading it, but not. I hope that not, what chat I don't think Mod Marcos is reading it. I think that was something that stood out to me when we were looking at people talking about the roadmap afterwards. Just it felt like almost everything on the roadmap was being talked about in some ways. I think before we've had like certain maybe they, they didn't mention any of that, you know, like, like at PPMers all or something, feeling super satisfied and talking lots about it. We don't hear as much chatter on everything else. It was really cool to see, um, you know, uh, questers coming out to talk about the fact that the storyline was continuing and that we're going to also get seasonal quests. Uh, we saw skillers talking about the skilling updates and what they might might be coming with those for things like woodcutting and fletching. It was really awesome to see, and um, I think for me as a player, I'm, a, I'm quite a variety player, so it, it definitely hit me. But um, yeah, but it sounds like chat very happy uh, to hear the the level of communication and also the variety. So that's really awesome. So it sounds like step one, okay, Marcos, <laughs> based on chat at least. Good start. That's, that's the dream, yeah. I think that <laughs> obviously of all these things, it's kind of like yeah, persisting it over time is like be very challenging and a lot of work, but we need to make sure we do that as best we can. Yeah, yeah. We, I think you, you say a phrase that I've been, I've been using for quite some time, but it's about putting actions to words, right? Like it's one thing to to say what we're going to do and say all the right things, but then we have to deliver on it, right? So uh, I'm excited to see us do that. It's going to be really, really good. So yeah, on exactly. that point, obviously. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You go. No, you go. Sorry. No, it's fine. You go. Sorry, I was, I was going full into flow mode to keep the conversation moving. Um, so let's talk about risk actually. So obviously. You kind of giving your perspective on on something you want to bring and love at, bring more out of for both games and and bring to the to RuneScape. I know you've only been working on RuneScape for a very short time now, but like, what's your impression so far about how the team feels when we think about last year? Both in terms of like <coughs> things that we think we could build on Please from last year, but also things that we think recognize things to have learned how from. bad Necromancy launch was. Yeah, I think that there's 
Like last year was obviously they're not done, I think yeah. that there was like there's some really good releases. Obviously released a new skill and there was lots of other, like pretty like <laughs> I mean he is stuff, new, like, so I guess he won't year. know, but like frick, um, he doesn't know. And I recognise that the autumn was a more challenging period off like Hero Pass got released and things. Cap. I think that I like overall, the word challenging. Yeah, he's not yeah, gonna I know. I think overall the um the key thing that I think I've seen with the teams that I've been with it is that Fundamentally, it's a really talented team. Like they're really smart, they're very creative. They've got lots of really interesting ideas about stuff that we can do. The main challenge is more like how I can kind of help, like get out of the way and just let them do that, rather than um, overburden them with like process or whatever. So the, the main thing I want to be able to do is like empower the team more, so they're actually more able to kind of make decisions about what they're making. Empower the team uh, uh, by yeah, hiring more developers. Like, so like more jacks, obviously like got over all that kind of stuff. Fund well. some of the microtransactions back um, into the game, like please. Get the team empowered so that they can like show off like, you know, uh, their creativity and ideas and things they've got for the game. And then in particular also, like we talked about earlier, is like making sure that they're doing that, but it also dovetails with the, you know, regular talking to the community keeping players up to date about what we're working on, making sure there's really good visibility in terms of like what the upcoming updates are and so on, so players know what they're getting for their subscription um, and all those kind of things as well. So um, I think that's the key thing for me at the moment. It's just like almost like getting out of the way of the team. Bring like, back the stuff, hero then, like, pass. Um, yeah, that's uh, a... Uh, no. I don't that, think uh, the players uh, want that and I definitely don't think Jagex wants that at this point. No, they don't, they don't <laughs> want a yeah, uh, Jack like, just Chernobyl said that. part two. Jack. Uh, saying I'm not even like I always do streams, but no one can see me this time. Let's talk to you, Jack, as well. Um, Mox obviously gave loads of amazing insight there. I, I hope the people in terms of what we took away from last year. Is there anything you would add from your perspective, especially kind of obviously being lead designer, that you kind of stands out to you from last year? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 been an interesting year in terms of thinking about like what we delivered and what went well and what didn't go well. Um, Hero Pass. My yeah. main focus during last year was on was on Fort Foreign Three, and that's been an interesting one in terms of learning that we were we, like the main priority for me was you know delivering regular content and making sure we were doing something, and we were doing that. And it's, no, it's kind of an interesting. Nah, Jack, you freaking the, liar! You are not delivering the, the regular content. actually being received quite well, but tell me what happened. They kind of from failed to deliver on the one middle of point. October yes. down like to freaking like. For Sorry, middle of September. And so that's been the main takeaway. Down to like was, December. What happened? It's really important for us to be shipping what, regular. What content, regular what content did we get? That, that like, you know, lots of. And what did we get before so that's, Necromancy? That's, that's in for like, like five months. Plan. Nothing. We got the fort and that was it. Week after about what we mean by scaling updates and how we're going to be approaching MTX. that. Making sure there's a lot to do. It is content. <laughs> MTX is, for is the content. What if we attach a construction level to something? You freaking. And then I think lying the with a freaking like, no, grin really on his face, I can tell. I feel like there wasn't really anything to do that month. And, or and just back, absolutely you know, delusional. Previous, yeah, that was a kind of a similar attempt as well for some of the Garden of But Grid, more likely know, lying. Job. So it's, it's, a, it's kind of I don't think, learning. And so I don't I think, think you get to the position that Mod like Jack that. is in by being stupid. That recommitment to like I think he's a smart guy. Making sure that we're... Ideally, like, like, like the, the, the worst case is that we put the update out we get feedback on the update. Can you can you just blame Mod Keeper? Just be like to, Mod Keeper uh, told us to like out in advance and get feedback. Not and, do anything. Um, and then then we'll all we'll, we'll all understand. Stop lying. If you keep lying, yeah, that, it just that, makes that, yourself look really bad. Good, you know, way to do things moving forward. I'm quite excited for that. Yeah, that was one of my favorite things about going on stream. Is like we kind of just if you remember the little kind of get involved thing we put at the end of it. That came together yeah. super last minute. Because we're like, we kind of have a mini roadmap, you know, in a very small window of time of like ways we want players to be involved. And we kind of sat there and realized that's actually very different for us. Like yep. If I look back at last year, um, I was really, really happy to see how much we started to try and work with players more. Like we took those like first steps to like community hit list. Obviously, um, it was really great. Some of our most kind of well received updates last year was community hit list, which was amazing to see. And it just shows like how much we can gain from listening to players more and kind of being more direct with players. And then like I think about necromancy, most open developed skill, you know, we brought the players in and got those creators who really helped make necromancy as good as it was at release with their feedback. Um I, by the way, my biggest regret is we didn't film that whole thing. 
Because, like, if you could have been a fly oh on the wall God. players to be in that room and see how much, like, iteration oh was happening. Oh, my God. They actually like the freaking launch of Necromancy. Um, to respond to feedback. I mean, to be fair, amazing. like... We should have documented, like, done a The Necromancy launch... Yeah, I got, was I all got, these um, A lot yeah. of it was good, but the parts people. that were bad about <laughs> yeah, it were like, so yeah. bad like, oh, well, that it just nuked everything else in the game. So let's get you... Let's get that one. So it just overshadows all the good things about it. So they might just only be looking at the good things... The I talked a little bit at the top of the show, like, we had kind of, when I when I initially joined, there was like, um, developers were a lot, a lot more kind of timid to go out and speak because there'd been kind of some instances of things being said a little bit prematurely, and there was concern that like, you know, it's sometimes you have to talk about projects at the right time, um, and like, there was a little bit of concern there, and so players got quite timid, uh, sorry, um, uh, J-Mods got a little bit timid about it because they felt like they might accidentally say something they shouldn't. And, you know, we put a big effort last year into kind of trying to enable those those uh, J-Mods to feel like they could go out there again. It's never, if you've ever felt our oh, J-Mods have been quieter, it's never been because of them. Um, and that's something that CM was doing last year. And that was really awesome to see. It was like how much, you know, even Raman just being like, hey, what would you like to see for Christmas? Like these small little things uh, that mean a lot um, happening. So it was all that good stuff. But then there was obviously things like the misstep of Hero Pass, right? And like, oh my god, things so we're, we're going straight into it. Okay, year to look back to Hero actually, Pass, I, let's I go. Guess, like, let's talk very briefly on Hero Pass, I think, because I think it'd be a disservice to not mention it at all during this chat. It's not something we've really had a chance to sit down w w and talk about at any point. Like, yeah, let, let's Marcos, hear since you began what are their opinions? Working on the team, what's your take on Hero Pass? Like, what do you, what do you think the team's taken? I'd be keen to get your perspective on it. I think the yeah, because I think that, like, obviously this was a bit before my time, and my observations on Hero Pass were largely kind of like um, a bit from the sidelines, kind of seeing what was happening and things. And I've spoken to some of the people uh, on the team around it and things, so I've been trying to get an idea about what happened. I think that, and I'm I'm also conscious of, obviously the people working it had the right intentions and were trying to do and did like try to do the best possible work and things like that. So, but I think that the main disconnect was between like. Kind of expectations of uh, versus what the reality was. So, I think there was, was I think there was some kind of like roadmap reveal, which into an update in a certain month. The major update. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I think that's a lot of the issues. Oh yeah, that's between <laughs> that was true. Expected versus what was delivered. The whole that, month of September was, was the like, hero fast. I remember that. Like, game content or something. So, I think that obviously um, put us into a weak position at the beginning. And then obviously, like what I've seen from the player feedback and stuff, it didn't really meet kind of like what they're expecting from the update and so on. And I think that that ties a lot into what we've been talking about around just making sure we're talking to players early with projects and getting their feedback early. So we know if there is a fundamental issue of what we're building, we find out early and we can like adjust it into something which is actually um, more in line with what players are actually wanting. So, yeah, I uh, think the hero yeah, pass could have actually there. snuck, snuck yeah, in. I think. Something I'd also if Jagex add released well, know, like, a lot of other content in tandem like with it, the buffs and obviously the the effect of removing daily challenges and and something that we really took from it was like you know and I know that might be kind of controversial and, and but kind of talks about it we didn't see those issues. What I see, um, that's what I think. They they were something that like some of it had been discussed and like. It, the player perspective we got from that there was so what much led to the cancellation was this players you know see huge things that maybe we just hadn't considered it's not that we looked storm at of and said backlash that all culminated um, together that, like for example but if like half of the backlash didn't exist then it could have snuffed uh, through kind of paid power with the buffs and the team kind of looking at those and saying oh these are a nice additive thing a lot of our our players are on uh, premier membership so they're going to get access to this as well and um, don't and get me wrong, I'm not a fan of the Hero Pass. Just different I'm just levels. You know, trying to be real with it. Those things, but the community kind of showed us like the real response in that situation, the kind of a perspective that we'd missed. And so I'm really excited for this, our ability to kind of develop with players involved is, yes, we have a lot of hardcore players at the studio. We have a lot of players at the studio and the majority of our team play. Uh, many of them read the internet every single day. Um, and are very, very plugged into you as well as themselves. Do as they, though? But there's always things I don't, the players I don't believe will find. That. There's always things the I players really don't believe that. that maybe we You're, haven't considered. You guys are or, not hardcore um, players. Haven't caught or whatever, and it was really, really interesting um, to me to see that and kind of have that like, wow moment. That, like, yeah, I do not believe we, that. How did we one, not catch that? Bit. Like, oh, now that they say it, it kind of makes sense. 
Uh, are they Jack, thinking when they remove daily point, challenges like, for is there anything you'd add to that? Like, is that am I off piece there, or do you, four hours do you of kind of agree? Uh, obviously, I'm no. saying this is a community measure in the middle, but <laughs> yeah, no, I would. I, would I never really say, remember like, our too much. To hero pass was from the hero pass. How did this happen? But it, it did seem a little bit unbalanced. We, like, obviously, we did that, something wrong. For sure. right? I don't think there's any point bouncing around that. So then the question for us is, what did we do wrong? How do we? Mm -hmm. How do we how do we stop this? We've we've done the wrong thing. We need to we need to make sure this doesn't happen again. It's kind of a almost a mini EOC moment in that regard. Um, <laughs> and I think our our takeaway internally was oh that's that's freaking we've just funny. Got to talk to the players more. Right? They um, they still so look then, back at the EOC thing as just like this massive every disaster. Level level, how are we going to talk to the players more? What does this Which mean? Which it was it, 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 to, to be an extent, completely it fair. It kind of forced us onto the back foot a little bit. But of of. The entire modern RuneScape three is what, how sort should we be of talking built about content. Now, Does this so? mean that you, know, you can't really example, say you know, it was a disaster, ask, but that's the game now. That's like it saying started as a disaster. That's like saying the game is a disaster. We should be approaching content. Like it started as a disaster just because like yeah, it was it was horrendously done. A game that you clicked every like a lot more few seconds or like dodge stuff and click again, whatever. Absolutely. To having to actually like use abilities and stuff. Our like, priority has to be shifted. It was a like, massive regular content. With yeah. the with the caveat that like for various reasons that are quite complicated to get into, but for you know something like Hero Pass is not what we mean when we say substantial content. You know, we're not talking about something like that. And I, again, as Marcus mentioned earlier, like a temporary event does not count as substantial content. Something like that, you know. So it yeah. it, it it was an analysis of you See, know they what, understand what are we being told? What's the feedback? Um, how do we, uh, you know, how do we avoid um, doing something like this? And, and yeah, I mean, that way, you know, we can, we can. Oh make my god, they still didn't say anything yeah, new. Yeah, yet, no, though. actually, there was a lot of. I remember there being. I a guess lot this of entire podcast is just them actually, talking yeah. about their feelings. Because um, it's not, you know, if you look back, especially at RuneScape, Which yes, might, we've actually, had a that of, just might like, be the whole thing of, of kind of upset the community on a, on a fairly big scale. But like Hero Pass, I think was just so unexpected for us there was a bit of a soul searching moment of like what led to this there was a lot of things i think we learned from it as a team and not just about the hero pass specifically but just about runescape like i, I remember um what jack one of the things that kind of i always remember back on is you know daily challenges the importance of that as a kind of ritual for so many players that like you know we wanted to change and 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 kind of modify and make better essentially as an experience like that was kind of the idea of the hero pass mission system is something more relative uh -huh, to play yeah. and something that removing the daily experience. keys yep but like that was gonna go that's so well something that's just embedded in how we all play runescape and, i, and I we feel kinda, like i understand who he is like quite i don't know if this is fair to say more jack but it feels like you know he's all saying of us, oh we were so blindsided we, we didn't quite put the weight on that of that but you had to have realized runescape lives that actually to some people is kind of part so of many of the changes right? yeah that were just straight nerfs we're gonna in terms of how we come off badly of like how now, right? how could you not it, see it the daily key very, removal very, very early like when i first started people would complain about that remember what the update was now but it was it was not long after the Dungeoneering. Like it, it was so and obvious that one had made an update which just moves one tree. It, well, it, it's not the famous Timbo example. And that's just one, one of the, the examples. Trees, I mean, you know? A tree had moved into the middle of a field. And that's, and that's and why I don't buy it when saying, they say, like, oh, we're hardcore players. Years, I've done the same you're not hardcore course, players. If you were hardcore right players, you would know how valuable those three keys a day were. It kind of reminds me of that, of like, RuneScape is so much about like these, 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 um, yeah, rituals, as you put it. Yeah, and rituals, like Making yeah. sure that we are respecting that and, and protecting the way that you want to play the game. The yeah, player base. yeah, I would agree with that. If you can believe it, there's still things scapers to learn about you 23 years in. <laughs> Even with as many veterans as we have on the team, yeah, there's a way that you can surprise us, which is amazing. And, and they recognize um, yeah, that. Yeah, I do, I do feel like, it, it, on, at least on a... They have been saying, oh, we sure, want to communicate like better. Was even more than I, so I felt I'm going to take their word for it, and they want to communicate better. Right, um, I'm aware, Marcos, uh, we kind of... Jack and I went down a rabbit hole there, <laughs> talking back about the past. Let's, let's talk about this year, um, which you're a lot more closer to. Um, so I think it's, it's uh, fair to say we touched on this a little bit. Oh, Don't forget uh, they nerfed the further, Onmans. For those of yeah. you listening live, uh, Honestly, we are one thing they can away. really do in the, in the J -Mod to communicate better with their bit. audience Got a few more to get is through on our side. We'll leave some just time for them. Don't worry. Have a um, thing but, on uh, Reddit or something uh, every week. Yeah, I think 
we touched that on they screen, but take a bunch of like kind of I think they do do that different, things think, and just talk about it on a live stream of like we the ins wiser, and outs of like why it can or cannot happen and whatnot. Or like if they want to be more open of like why they can't do things. RuneScape felt different for a few months this year so far. Like it would be so much better if they said we can't do this because of X Y Z. So let's chat about it. But we can do this. I think if we do some of the stuff though, they they are like not allowed to say. I'll explain later. I don't want to. Yeah. But like, uh, there's something and, they can't say. Kind of, you know, yeah. why did things feel a little bit different in that time? In terms of the degree of recalibration, as we kind of re-examined, I guess, like how we make content for the game and how we deliver it, and the stuff we talked about earlier in terms of like making, in terms of how do we get players better involved, what kind of cadence do we want to be hitting with the content, what types of content do you want to be doing, and so on. So the main focus that I've had since I've been working uh -huh. with the team in particular, and this is kind of largely a reflection of more my production background because I tend to look at it through that lens is more very much focusing around uh, like um, how do we um, how do we deliver the content on a on a regular basis and what are we delivering so and in particular just a real focus much more on like delivering as much value as possible to the players good uh, how can we good map roughly around those principles um, All I had to hear I'm, was yeah, the value to the, the player, game. value to the customer. Jack that is how a company succeeds. You, had a lot you of provide value. We can do around this. So it was mostly See, this guy, is, this guy, Jack and some of the other mods Mod Marcos, group and just like already and into really 10 shape. tiers above Mod Keeper. To make sure that the, um, he provided uh, zero value to the customer. Principles in terms of the types of content we were making and the regularity of making sure that... Um, uh, it was strong as possible and that we knew we could deliver it so that it's with as much confidence as possible within any kind of games development environment yeah, that, that's been the main thing is kind of just like reevaluating like how we're delivering the content and making sure that it's the right types of content delivered regularly enough in the right way and like there's enough communication with the players and so on yes we kind of a root and i definitely in my time here i've never seen kind of as much of a root and stem kind of reanalysis of how we do everything really um which i know obviously you kind of came into yeah the process explain the Huli, wh why could, could you not well, produce regular content in the last from, three years old school, but, um, explain it has really been a lot of kind of is it maybe because your your manager was bottom, freaking really, bad at their job as a team yeah and i think that aka like I mod like, keeper mod of toenails a lot of solid plans basically it was question like iterating for those rather than doing anything from scratch um and then what i to be able to do is try and bring some of the practices over from old school let me read the chat i haven't been reading it to the players like the the in terms of just like the discord chat how we are we talking things, anyone like saying mod we, keeper <laughs> um uh how we like construct the the overall roadmap and generally with old school we have like quite a long-term plan of what we could do obviously everything's polled so it's all like uh, it's all like subject to that but we generally have ideas into the future of like okay that freaking do, so earlier discord year, chat is just like a bunch of nonsense quite a few years in advance so, um, and then with RuneScape, it will be a question of, um, we kind of like sat down and went over the plans that were already there and like iterated them a bit. And we've, we've shared like the roadmap through to the end of the year. Um, and then the idea is that um, uh, we already have, you know, a reasonable idea of what we would do through to the middle of next year. And then now it's the question of like iterating that, making sure that the first half of next year is like as good as possible and then extending it. So we have like an idea through to the second half of the year. And then ideally, we'd be able to then talk to the players quite soon around, um, I say quite soon, this will probably be more like um, uh, September-ish time, around like what the next, what the major beats are for kind of like um, 2025 and so on. So trying to build out that longer horizon line, and that ties into kind of what you were saying around just like modifying some of the processes. But generally, the team had really good ideas, and it's like a question of just letting them do it and get on with it as much as possible. Yeah, it's funny you saying about like, I still, I still can't get my own head around, let alone, I, I'm sure for the community, the idea that they're going to hear about 25 content in as early as September. Like, I, it's been a long time since we've I mean, that makes sense. That and done that. So that's, that's you should really cool. hear next year's um, content. Well, Jack, is there anything you want to towards the add end of the, this year about um, the kind of what's been going on over the past few months? Do you feel like Marcos covered anything? Was there anything you wanted to add? I'm waiting for the like no, yeah, Q and A. I think it mostly covers it. Yeah. So I can um, discuss like the the past communities yeah we are we are all read the post okay, that we are all see. committed to like making sure that we're that we're that we're shipping content and making sure what that we need to do is figure out how to keep the good without tying up the bad yeah he like player voice talking about the via whatever the hero pass way. right you know we can do that for the for the particular case like the project um the ones i'm most excited for are where we can just put the whole design out there and, and openly discuss it you know 
as early as possible. But but you know it, it, we can't do that with a quest, for example. But for a scaling update, that might make perfect sense. So I'm quite excited for Sponge. Sponge is going to be he, he he's going to be putting some weapon effects on a beta so that people can try them out. And that's 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 that's, that's such a good way to do it because we always have such a problem with like balancing post-launch. That was such a topic of discussion for the FSOA. Where because the effect kind of went live, it has such a weird Someone effect on the economy if we make changes okay. to post-launch. <laughs> so doing that pre-launch is such a good, like even if we can't put the entire update on a beta, which no is one kind of talking about keeper. Just put that so was Jack in effect beta, doing that's, keeper's that's really job while he so sat cool. there? <laughs> the scariest element of the update. So yeah, I'm really excited. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, I'm, exci I'm so thing. excited for players to essentially go. Yeah, I want that T95. Probably, kind of and I don't even think Jack was doing and, anything and for us to not. Put it out they there both and weren't like, doing oh, anything. Like there they, was freaking. It doesn't feel like it's meeting like the kind one of month of content or, in all of 2024 uh, or 2023. Quite there. Like it's gonna be really, really cool to do. Uh, I'm really excited to do that. And look out for more on that next week. Uh, if you're listening to that, uh, this on the 17th of May, um, we're gonna be having a stream next week on the 21st of May with Sponge and Mod Ryan uh, to talk about Sanctum of Rebirth and also some of the ways that you can start providing yes. feedback. We're gonna open up boss, some topics on boss. that. So stay tuned. So we need to make the boss hard. From community perspective, um, just to add to your answers, really, I think the first thing is like I want to say a big thank you to everyone who was kind of bearing with us over the kind of months where we were quieter, because we were doing that root and stem review. There was some kind of careful communication about what we could say and when that came into play, and I know it was really frustrating to not hear much from us, and we desperately wanted to. You know, we were talking about how do we bring you on this journey, and then we felt like that would raise more questions. I think the main thing to know is we've set ourselves up now, not just on the development side, as Marcos and Tim, uh, sorry, Jack have been talking about. I'll never get used to calling you Mod Jack, Jack. I'm just um, going to say what happened with Mod Keeper. Because uh, they are just side, dodging like the ball. I have, like. In a position where I think, from, from a communication standpoint, you know, we're working <laughs> with Mod Mod Keeper uh, made like two or three kind of posts during those the first five months this year. When it comes to things like content. Was he just a fall guy? Like, what's, what's going on? Comes to how like, why are they just, just projects, not talking about Mod Keeper at all? working on holistically now. So rather than kind of communication oh, kind of working around apparently he the, the okay projects, someone's already left often did now we're kind of working closely together we're all kind of part of the of the same unit which i need to amazing. find that post after this feel that and i hope you will but um the main thing is just thank you for that quieter period we know it was frustrating and it was difficult to do that we wanted to kind of bring you and, and keep you informed nothing but there's to certain say, ways we have to do things <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah we appreciate all of you I think the second thing is what I hope you'll see from us this year on the communication <laughs> front isn't just around freedom up to go um, damage another in a game position to kind of have you know this great kind of more player involved development and working. We're also trying to bring more consistent communication alongside that. So um, you're, what you're going to see from us this year is kind of the return of weekly live streams. It might take us a while to get there. Um, but we're setting up to do that again. We're also going to try and do more. Oh my fun god! Live so many people are responding to me saying they fired see, it. <laughs> um, when it comes to kind of what we've been focusing on lately, which is content. Oh, uh, this is hilarious! Inside, just getting things like JVM happening again, uh, having more fun with the community. I, I like. Uh, you can see a I, I sparked a up they, a freaking fire you, about my keeper. Out there, and creators have their own incredible communities uh, for RuneScape and deserve to, to for us to give back to them as well for the communities they build within RuneScape itself. And that's not just people who create videos or stream, but we're talking artists and community leaders. We're really trying to do more there. Oh, content I creator. All, what I hope you feel from us this year is a lot more kind of openness and honesty and transparency reach out. in terms of on, if you on guys regular, want right? to like, reach out to, to Fishy that, Wizard 5 I hope you see more, or actually Fishy on more Twitch kind of calls like this where we my have channels a, are all open stage and talk a little Jagex. bit more chilled out and bring you into it. And I hope this feels like a good start. We just got to keep it up. But yeah. Um, it's been exciting for us as well to kind of rebuild from the ground up as well. So, right, uh, back to the guest star because I want to make sure we've got some time for some questions. Ah, yes. Um, okay, I here just we want go. To ask you one questions. more question, Marcos. What's your kind of vision for RuneScape as it stands? I know you are new, newly on the team, and I know it's very. I'm much curious a team thing, but but what is if this? you had to describe it right now, where would you what would you kind of describe it as? Um, that's a good question. I think that some spoilers potentially if I go into that too much. I think that uh, <laughs> at a high level, I would say that um, I want to make sure the game's set up to be as successful as possible for as long as possible. So that's the I'm most create like a really generic um, answer I've ever heard. Um, plan for like what the game is and where it's going, and things like that, and making sure that's better communicated to the players so they really believe in it. 
Um, uh, that's that's kind of like what I'm trying to head towards. That's, I know that sounds a little bit fluffy, but um, uh, we want to be able to communicate something probably in a bit more detail in a few months, I suspect, more along those lines. And then um, also when we're looking at like what's in, say, the 2025 roadmap or 2026, it's going to be that will be beginning to tie more into that kind of type of overall vision for the game, I think, as well. Brilliant. That's great. Uh, I guess well, let's get to some community questions. So I'm aware we don't have a lot of time, but uh, thank you for sharing with that. And it's also worth saying uh, it was mentioned earlier. I forgot to add on. Marcos was talking about our 2025 planning. Obviously, we have a picture that we've built for 2025 uh, that's very much in progress. But it won't be finalized and we won't kind of make our final plan for what we're doing in 25 without your help. And that's through the survey. Um, we've had an incredible, and I mean incredible, amount of completions on that survey. It has blown us away. It's a very big survey. If you haven't gone and done it already, um, it does take time. Some I don't know when I'm going to ask the question. Hour on do it. I do it now? That's, uh, that's, not, that's not the average. But um, hey, if you enjoy it, that's all that matters. But um, the survey that we put out is very different to the other surveys you've experienced. Um, they are the other surveys we've done have been very much kind of a check and an, wanting to get an understanding of how you felt about recent content. How about um, kind of give us? I don't know when. I don't know when to launch well this. Because well. I feel this like it's just gonna different. it's this just gonna go into the void. Go? How what do you feel about this? What do you feel about that direction? It's really a guiding force for us. And if there's one thing you do in the community this year, as much as I want to hear from you all the time, and I want you out there chatting amongst each other and creating the amazing community that you are. Um, is yes, to go do, fill out that survey. Do the because survey. It really will be. This is everyone. Be do the survey. Help us kind of build that twenty-five roadmap. Especially in a way if you're a part of a like small community, you need to represent the community from RuneScape. So it, it really is that important. Um, it's it's, it's super like, important. It's not, it's not me overstating this. It is something that will be a core part of our planning. So please do complete it out, and it will also help us forward. Like let's and, say you really um, love mini you games. You have to say, oh, I like mini games. Amazing that survey was. Because if you don't say it, so they'll think no one likes mini games. If, if it took you an hour to complete, think so. You, you have to just together. represent your community, um, and it means a lot to everyone that you felt um, so so passionately about it and about how good it was. So thank you for that. Right into uh, our last ten minutes. So let's get to some questions. Okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm watching. Go it. into okay. This first one I should have expected uh, that I've seen that seems to have the most upvotes I can see. Oh, actually. What? Uh, Where is this? The higher one. Let's go with that first. Where is uh, this Pine channel? Is asking, are there any many interesting trends on the survey so far? At least that you'd be willing to share. I with I don't see. Rune, is it in this one? RuneScape questions. Uh, oh, is it, the, is it on the? Sorry, go ahead, wait, oh, yeah. Is it on the? Wait, is it on the Reddit? No, you go for it. Hold on, maybe it's the, on the Reddit. The, the looking looking at the early data. So the data's not all in yet. But oh looking at the early sorry. data. Sorry. Uh, why is this not showing? Again, fletching is very popular. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Supposedly is. Yeah, it's very interesting. Is it on the Reddit? Marcos, is there anything you want to add beyond what? Uh... Um, I've only seen some fairly basic data so far in it. So mostly no, it's not on the I've Reddit. So far, I've just been around like feedback on the roadmap for um, coming uh, six months. Um, the Wait, bit I'm really interested where to see is the there channel? Some, uh, various ideas suggested for things that could be done over the next couple of years and stuff. So I'm particularly keen to see kind of what responses were to those. Brilliant. Uh, there is, well, there's a lot of questions to go through. I'm trying to organize by upvotes as best I can. Uh, there is a question I also should have expected. Um, someone is asking about player avatar refresh. Oh, um, yes. Obviously, it wasn't in our roadmap. Is there any thoughts we have on that right now? Um, player avatar. It's always been something that since we kind of showed it in development, it's been uh, Whatever, I can't find it. Do you have any initial thoughts on it, Marcos, or is it too early to say from, uh, from your short time on the team? Who said um, hopefully cancelled? I need to get a clearer idea I, I know it gets brought up what quite the... a lot from seeing the chat and the social media and stuff. Um, I need to get an idea around where the project is and like how basically how expensive it is to do because I think it's quite a complex, large project. So I'd need to get an idea about where we are in development and how much work's left. And then uh, basically, as always, it's a trade-off if you do that. There's a lot of other stuff you can't do, so we need to weigh it up. Oh, yes. I, I, I am interested in to seeing more detail about what the project is and what its possibilities I, where... are. Yeah, I think when I look back, the one thing I love about that is uh, um, it's it's it was one of the oh, first projects we were, like, did that kind of open development this? community involvement thing on really. Oh, it's like one. it's kind of like where we are going to be moving forward. Um, so it's really interesting from that perspective. Okay, I want, uh, that did anyone of, because of that? There's a lot of personal attachment to it. On top of the fact, any that, questions? You know, obviously, it's um, 
Okay, uh, I'm a just going to idea I'm... of a piece of content, albeit with a lot of technical issues uh, <laughs> between us and bringing it to life. But uh, Jay Vampire asks, would you ever make the community hit list openly available for everyone to see and comment on? Interesting. Yeah, we've we have discussed doing things like that before. Uh, the the challenge is how it operates generally in terms of like how, like what software you use and like how you make it visible or manage people's expectations around stuff actually getting done. Um, but yeah, that is something we've discussed before, and it could be of interest. But we need to see whether what like how feasible it is to do it in a way that isn't like quite misleading potentially. Yeah, we had a we had a call with um, QA myself. who have been raising this as an idea as well uh, <laughs> just today yeah it's a really cool idea like you said there's a there's there's a lot of considerations with it but definitely from a community angle not closed either um that's what i'd add to that uh the rs guy asked something that's getting a lot of upvotes um and i think what i saw in chat a lot so this is a really good one for you um with all the planned content in the roadmap it seems like the majority of projects are very early in development is there any concern that you won't be able to meet the announced production schedule or are you uh, feeling yeah, confident sure. about that aspect of it um, the eternal question of games development, I think. The, uh, at the moment, <laughs> yeah, one's getting kind of upvoted. Obviously, the, the priority generally will be to release things. Wait, Mark Keeper's the being mentioned? So Was he? I, I didn't to, see it. For example, release something in hypothetically in September. If we know it's not right and it's not good enough, like we would, it's better for us to delay it than release it. I mean, someone a, someone asked a question for Mod Keeper, Keeper, but I don't the think they other answered thing it. We don't want to do is force the team uh. to do extra hours and stuff to hit dates because there were unforeseen things that required extra work, which meant the original date wasn't possible. So we'll try and hit Can you guys up, up, as much as possible. Upvote my question you, so they read uh, it, please. Being transparent guys on Discord, upvote my question. So, um, there's always a Bush, I know you can upvote it. Slip a bit, but the goal is to do all those things, as we said. I'm not in the RuneScape score. Yeah, Rick, I think it's, it's, also, you just you enter know, it. It's Rick, you need to enter and, and Here, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. went into to that before we announced no. the roadmap as well, right? So we're going in, uh, at least in the state. I we're left in, it long ago because as you said, then the <laughs> I didn't want to be in there anymore. I, know it, was... the corner, but I gave up on it. It's highly considered, isn't it, Marcos? Yes. It was uh, well, they're definitely not going to read my question. Unfreaking lucky. Yeah. So, uh, right. I do want to say. Uh, I mean, they might. It's more Jack. Pull off the call because Mod Jack had a, a a hard cut five minutes before the end of our show. So goodbye to Mod Jack. Mm. Thank you. Gonna for... go now. Bye bye. Thank you. Uh, I, goodbye, Mod Jack. <laughs> so goodbye. Uh, right. Um, the, so I'm go. If, so you know, for if you are asking questions, uh, please use the upvote feature because we're going down. I'm trying to pick out the ones I'm noticing have the uh, most upvotes. No. Given that we have a limited amount of time. I, they're not gonna read uh, it. <laughs> going up really high to make sure I didn't miss any. No, it doesn't look like it did. Okay, so the next one I'm seeing with a lot of upvotes. Uh, it's another player avatar refresh one. <laughs> uh, people asking, there's quite a lot of questions about how's this doing in the survey, how's that doing in the survey. That's probably not the right kind of questions to ask here, mainly because it's ongoing now. Um, but it's good to know you would like to hear what kind of our outcomes are from the survey. That's something we can take away. How are people um, not upvoting my comment? Sure. Um, like, all right, question. But I think we'll... Do they just not care? I, I, I mean, I do know. Bod Marcos, uh, that are not things in progress. That most current which, RS players uh, just don't XP care. But... has asked, OSRS is borrowing some RuneScape 3 devs to help with sailing. Are there any plans for RuneScape 3 to borrow old school RuneScape devs what? to help with projects like Group Iron Man? Um, what? Sadly, a lot of people what don't care about that. Wait, wait. It's getting upvoted. I'm wearing six. Keep upvoting them, please. Consulting on the project is probably the best way to describe it. So they've been um, advising the RuneScape team on how it was implemented and making recommendations on best approach and so on. Good. Yeah, I know. Seven. And obviously, it's something we. You we guys are doing it. You guys are upvoting my comments. From and see how they did it, though, with a lot of our own custom work to go into it. I should stress that it's not a an easy thing to up for us to go build it's not like a, a drag and drop by any means and i want to say that for our tech team who would kill me if i ever gave that insinuation because our tech team have a lot of work between here and there to get done it's uh ariane oh sorry yeah it's very yeah it's very project, yeah. yeah very uh ariane is asking are there any plans in the future to potentially give some love to the clan system whether it be as little as some nice quality of life updates Interface, twi what? interface tweaks or full-blown changes to things like the Citadel. Oh, Citadel. Um, clans. So we have actually discussed some of that internally quite recently. We are looking at options for clans to see what is feasible, and then again, as always, we need to weigh it up against other stuff in the roadmap. The 
um, uh, is the how do you upvote? Uh, you just hit the up arrow system right is below. That more valuable than other types of updates we can do, but it is something we've discussed a few times. Yeah. Yeah, I think there'll be a lot of clannies having to hear that. You're always in our minds, clannies. We're always talking about you. Um, it's it's something that uh, clans are a common topic at the shoot. I can tell you that. Uh, M underscore with underscore Z asks a question that I've seen a lot of people Red, ask. I need you to upvote uh, my comment. Simple. I believe in the live stream. It the there was a Jagex that Discord. RS3 would not have Where the with the fuck is the Jagex Discord? In you... What methods are we expected to be able to communicate our feedback? <laughs> it means the RuneScape Discord. How... Oh, yeah, so sorry, RuneScape Discord. My statement still stands because I'm not a part of that. Is, if we're not going to be a, a poll game, you should probably be happy like, uh, not. like OSRS or a very deeply involved poll game, like OSRS, what's your kind of vision for how players will be involved with development? Yeah, okay, question. I don't know how I mean, you're gonna find it, but there's a, there's a channel the called JMod so Questions. So I don't know how you even find it. Soft, Huli, I think. So it would be. Okay. Where's my be where's my call? Oh, like it's being pushed like all the way up. Gap, <laughs> all the way up. <laughs> empirical data, I guess, in terms of like what players' feedback is and making sure that it's aligned with kind of what players are looking for in it. There, you don't have access. What? Wait, you have to get access to upload and download. Very much like an old school thing. It works. Okay, maybe you can't do it, brain. Unlucky. I'm uh, streaming the uh, Jagex podcast thing they're doing. Um, mm. uh, and I think that there are other methods we can use to try and get community feedback. Yeah, I'm getting censored. The process. Nah. What did you say that it was uh, called? Sure, I'll at least check and see if I can. Uh, the, the channel's called jmod-questions. Yeah, brilliant. I, I think, yeah, just to add, you, you were saying from a community perspective, I'd describe it as it's going to be a my, lot more of a verbal... My question was posted kind of, at 12.23 uh, p.m. Oh, uh, I do not have verbal, access to the channel. But we're going to focus a lot what on kind of bringing you into the conversation, bringing you into Jagex. design, um, working out really great ways that we can involve as many people as possible and kind of having a voice in the shaping of our content um and we'll do that at various stages for different projects we'll have different approaches um but we're going to really put a focus well, on kind of dev to player and time to leave and that's kind of going to we're going to use <laughs> no, 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 you gotta, gotta stay so like next time they do this you can all vote uh, my god <laughs> really excited to be using a beta <laughs> too late for, already uh, gone what's coming oh, up the sanctum of rebirth maybe that's why to, they got rid of xj9 in the weapons. discord that's before really ever done today before that i'm aware of um, definitely so gonna do so that he doesn't have any like stupid that, shit to uh, say during this. Alright, alright, yeah. time to look at all of Andy's <laughs> discords he's a part of. I don't have any weird source the hentai one? <laughs> not where, where? There's no... I said, where is the hentai one? It's clearly the normal one. The one with the normal pictures is clearly the hentai one. The old Chosen Elite Discord. That's what it was. So I think that the... I think we can still pre. So what I'm hearing is it's time to turn that one into a hentai Discord. All right, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna leave you. Well I mean, there's probably question. some hentai on there. <laughs> These guys are the freaking degenerate. This, uh, <laughs> the, this is a question we get a lot in and out of the show. Inverted skill capes? Question mark. Don't worry, a lot of our rating group is pretty degenerate as well. They are now. You are one. I am not. What? Yeah, there was. You are one. group me in with them. Doing the live stream a day and everyone kept going on about inverted skill caps. I had to ask basically what they were. So, um, yes, you're we probably have top four on we, the DGEN uh, list. Yeah, we'll, of I it. think we'll explore options around that probably. So, there you have it. I'm like, escapers. bottom yeah, eight. Inverted skill caps are no. on our minds, even if they are one on our four. roadmap for this year. We, we are definitely like the least degenerate person. Uh, Marcos, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it I is think I know what they're going to do. Start wrapping up the show and let you go and enjoy your weekend. After I know a what they're going to do with it. They're um, going to so do like skill say, prestiges, I think. We wrap up or, or add? Yeah, so it's, the uh, issue with skill uh, prestiges well, is there's this, probably so bound to be fucking people. some so, sort yeah, of for, like, bearing with us and, uh, annoyance an to it. Of listening to me talk about RuneScape and things. Um, and also just thanks for your support over the last few months. Because remember been, back uh, whenever uh, you could reset your like defense uh, or something or whatever? A long time ago. About what's going on so on. so um, I think it's exciting times ahead, but yeah, just please bear with us. Obviously, there's... Um, uh, we'll be ramping up over the next few months, but already in recent weeks we've had some really good updates, I think. So, really excited to what we can do in the future and looking forward to uh, spending more time with you. Yeah, thank you for coming on. I think, you know, escapers love to hear from the kind of, the, the people at the, the front of the game, you know, thinking about the future of the game. And, and I think uh, it's been a pleasure to have you on, Mon Marcos. My first time wow. hosting as well. That's first really time great. in the studio for a stream, and now first time hosting mm -hmm. a Discord stage. Uh, but here we are. It's been a week at first. But um, 
thank you so much, Mon Marcos, for, for being part of this and for taking the time on your Friday. Uh, among I got the you. Games this is a pretty fair trade, right? Speak to the community, I think. Yeah, sure. I speak for everyone in chat to uh, to say a big thanks. So, to anyone who's running not low on us live uh, as well, thank you so much for listening. We though. hope you enjoyed the show. Whether you listen to us live or you joined us after the fact, we'd love to know what you think about this format. Uh, we're trying to kind of mix up between live streams and this kind of live streams as the. I should probably the more very nice aspect, format. Kind of doing something more specific. Gives me views on Twitch. Something like JVM, and then these is more <laughs> casual chat where we can just talk to you, bring you inside the studio, some of our thinking of, and where we're going. Um, so please do let us know. And uh, other than that, I think it's been a pleasure to have you here, and we'll see you all soon again, Scapers. Have a great weekend. All right. Heck yeah. Thanks, okay. Thanks. Let's, let's... Okay, interesting. Uh, well, I got fricked. My my question. My question got completely fricked. But I, to be fair, I should have put the question on way earlier than I did, <laughs> because I didn't know where the channel was. So I I fricked myself with that. They probably mm -hmm. saw the question. They're like, no, no. this guy <laughs> is still coping. No, no, of no, no, no. PvP and mini games. No, 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 no. He's no, living no. in the past. No, no. Everyone who pl is who, everyone at Jagex is living in the past. Okay, but anyways, uh, yeah, I, I actually I I like that podcast thing. I, yeah, just, I feel uh, like if they keep doing that and promote it more, yeah, it'll definitely the, be the thing that was a really good push. idea before before like they were talking about stuff was like they there is a lot of stuff that they can't say is like you know the whole thing with mod yeah, keeper I like i think they like legally cannot even say it because the, let's say the yeah. reasoning why they can't promote they can't do this update is because you know mod keeper said no and they can't just be like oh a mod keeper said no yeah because like, they'll just get fired like uh, it's it's like you know but they should be able to say that probably but uh you know yeah i i think even in like the u.s you know we quote unquote have freedom of speech but i think like if you like talk bad about your employer like or like your like manager like this because they can have they can just fire you you know it's like and it's not even I mean, like when you, when you live bad, in that well like, they can literally just fire you for existing yeah ex exactly yeah like even in the u.s when you have free speech like, you can't even say that you just lose your job so unfortunately like i think they like literally can't they can't say like half the reason why they're not doing stuff. Yeah, it really sucks because like if they were able to be more open of like why things aren't happening, it would be so much better. Mm -hmm. it, it would be for sure. Like even if they but say we literally of... can't do this because we're not allowed to do it, that's better than literally just beating around the bush. Yeah, but again, like, if, if you say we're not allowed to do it, it, then it's just like, oh, why are you not allowed to do it? Oh, it's because my my boss isn't letting me do it. And it's like, oh, why is my boss not letting me do it? It's because my parent company is not letting me do it. Like, and it's just, it, it all just comes back to, like, you basically shifting yeah. the blame to your, to your, to your superiors, and then they can just fire you for that.